Hey everybody, Jess Reader with Drop Entertainment. I'm here with Kendra Kay. How's it going, Kendra? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm uh, I'm very excited. We're uh, live music is back. You must be even more excited than me. We're here at the legendary Elma Combo. How's uh, yes? How stoked are you for tonight? I'm so stoked. It's so great to be back in Ontario playing live music again. It's it was kind of cool. It's like restarting where I left off because it's kind of the last little tour I went on was a radio tour out here in Ontario. And wow. now we're kind of coming back as things are opening up again and kicking it off where we kind of left off last time. So I'm pumped to get everything rolling and play in front of a new crowd at the Elma Combo. I'm so pumped. You had a sold-out show last night in Oakville yeah. at the Moonshine Cafe. How'd, how'd that go? It was great. I'd never played in Oakville before, and the room was so cool. It was, uh, it was a fun, kind of more, like, intimate crowd. And it was so cool for me to be in a crowd of people that they were singing songs, singing my songs back to me, yeah. and the, the response I got after was amazing, and it felt so good. It was definitely a great start to being out here and getting back on the road, and I, I hope tonight's just as fun. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, you, you did your first show in Toronto back, what, uh, 20, 2017, 2018 for Canadian Music Week? Yes, it was. I played at the Phoenix, okay. I believe it was. Yeah. And I opened for Drake White, and I, yes, that was, it was crazy. That was my first time. I was, I think that was honestly my first time to Toronto ever. So overwhelmed, number one. <laughs> I grew up in a town of 500 people, so downtown Toronto. There was more people in that theater than there is in my hometown. So I was very overwhelmed as a you know, a young kid just getting into things, but I'm I'm pumped to be back and headlining a show. It's it's great. Awesome. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about your hometown a little bit and yeah. how that uh, that how that kind of shaped you as an artist. Oh man, Elkhorn is such a cool little town. Um, obviously, growing up, I knew everybody. Uh, in a town of 500, it's hard not to. Yeah. And the thing about where I come from is everybody's so supportive. And when I started this music thing, you know, when I was still in high school, I had instantly 500 fans and they have followed me since day one. And yeah. they they come to my shows, they buy my music, they follow me on social media and, you know, they see my mom uptown in the grocery store <laughs> and, oh, how's Kendra doing? We're so happy and excited for her. Yeah. So I'm I'm really grateful for all the support that I get from home. And it's definitely helped me build the foundation that I have for my fans. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, yeah, what's uh, what's it like going from you know playing a show like that to playing you know an iconic place in Toronto? Um, like, is that was that kind of your goal when you first started doing music? Did this kind of just come with the territory, or how's that feeling? You know what? When I first started this, I never had an end goal or how, where I wanted to go or what did I wanted to see. I just I wanted to make music. I wanted to put songs to radio. I wanted to play shows, and you know, getting to do that is amazing. I'm I'm living the dream that little Kendra had back when she played the Christmas concert for the first time in front of a crowd and being able to do that and, you know, bringing my, my guys along on the road with me, we're really one family and I, I'm just blessed. Like it's such a life. You can only think of just stop and think of the things that I've gotten to do. If I would have told myself that when I first started this, yeah. I don't think I would have been like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Like whatever. I'm sure you'll get there someday. Yeah. But as things keep coming, sometimes if you don't really stop and think about those successes you've had, you kind of just pass by them and move on to the next thing. But as I sit here and think about all the moments that have really brought on my career, I'm I'm really grateful for everything that's come. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and you you've played some very uh, some very Canadian shows yeah. during your career. You know, including uh, Stampedes. You've done the uh, Banjo Bowl. Yeah. What's uh What's What's one of the most like Canadian moments you think you've had in your career? Ah, uh, Canadian moments. I think well, for me. I mean, I'm a farm girl. I I ride horses. I barrel race in the summertime. My family chuck wagon races. Yeah. Um, for me, the most like Canadian show that I ever wanted to play that I got to play was the CFR in Red Deer, the Canadian Finals Rodeo. Yeah. That was super cool for me. I opened for Corb Lund. Um, we, I had actually had a person that I know that was competing in the finals that year in Red Deer. It was so cool. And to be able to play a show like that for a rodeo girl like me, you know, as a little kid, I was like, I'm going to make the CFR on my horse. But yeah. I mean, I made it there on the stage. So that's the next best thing. That counts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, and you uh, you recently released a new uh, single this year, Wild. Yeah. Um, can we talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Wild is, you know, this song, this is one that I didn't actually write myself. But when I got pitched the song, I fell in love with the lyrics to it. 
And then I got the credits to the song and I seen Carly Pierce was a songwriter on this one. And I knew instantly that was why I fell in love with the lyrics because I admire her so much as a performer and a songwriter and a yeah. singer herself. So this, this song is really all about a love. And it's so relatable because whether you're just new in a relationship or you've been with somebody for a long time, it's about that moment where you just kind of give into them and you let everything run wild and you just kind of become one. And I have that experience myself and it's, I feel like a lot of people are able to connect to that. And that story, you know, in a very country way and I'm, the way we brought it to life was in a very country way. So I'm, yeah. I'm proud of how the track turned out and I'm excited to see what it does. Um, yeah, the last time we saw you was actually just before we went into the pandemic. Uh, we were at the Horseshoe Tavern. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot has changed over the last couple of years. Um, how how have you kind of dealt with that, and how have you kept things rolling throughout uh, throughout a worldwide pandemic to be to be back <laughs> here in this spot as soon as things back opened up again? That's that's that was the goal from day one was to not you know don't let the ball quit rolling, you yeah. know, keep, keep the lights on, keep things, keep, keep things moving. And I think for me, I've always been so positive through this. And I think it's because I've never really had like an end, like I need to get to here by this point in my life. I've just always kind of let the ball roll itself and just kept chasing the dream and riding out the grind. And for me, I wasn't stuck at home doing nothing either. I, I live on a farm and we have cattle and we race horses as well. And I turned from, you know, singer star on stage to farmhand on the farm so I, I was still busy and I kept I kept uh you know busy doing that kind of stuff and it really I took that time and really focused on my music and I found my sound again I really took the time to hone in on the artist that I am and I think me being at home on the farm and really just being able to live the life that I was brought up in reminded me of my roots and what how I started this music journey and what I wanted my sound to be like and my lyrics to feel like and the stories I wanted to tell. And so really the last two years, I've spent hours and hours between writing and recording and everything in between to get to this point where I have this new body of music coming out that's so authentically me yeah. and it tells my story and it shares my sound. And I really just can't wait to get it into the world. So I think if I took anything away from the pandemic, it's just, I guess my excitement of what I found in myself while being at home. That's incredible. My next question was going to be, what's the biggest thing you learned over the pandemic? Oh. So you beat me to it. <laughs> but it, uh, it sounds like there's a, a whole body of new music coming out. So you want to talk about that? Do you, uh, do you have a date or anything for that? Set? Nothing sets yet. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a... Uh... Can I mention it? We're good. <laughs> I, um, I actually have my debut full-length album coming out this year. Awesome. Um, so we, haven't have a, we don't have a release date planned yet, but... Um, the Wild single is kind of the lead off to this next chapter. So you can expect this kind of new sound from Kendra K that's, you know, it's authentically country with modern ties. It really focuses on, you know, the simplicities of my voice and the stories of my life. And that's what I wanted to create. And I think for a debut album, I don't like, I think that's all you could ask for is just to introduce yourself to the world. So yeah. I'm excited to get it out. Oh, incredible. Well, I can't wait to hear that. I'm sure a lot of the people watching this too are going to be very excited for that. Um, cool. I'll, uh, I'll just ask a couple more questions. I know you, uh, you got your show coming up, so I don't want to keep it too long. But we, uh, we just passed International Women's Day. Can you tell me about who, uh, who are some of your biggest you know, female influences in music? In music? Um, I look up to a lot of artists. I think growing up, there's two different answers to this, because growing up, uh, my biggest musical influence was my aunt, actually, at home, Auntie Leona. She is a singer herself and she and her band would go out and they'd play a lot around the local area and she was the reason why I started going on stage. She brought me up, she drug me up when I was too shy to go on stage and she, I got over that fear of being on stage from such a young age because I had her there with me yeah. and she really, you know, she, she gave me karaoke tracks to practice singing to, to enter singing competitions with and she always, you know, she gave me advice of always look your best when you go on stage and you know, you're, 
every crowd is as big as the next and all that kind of stuff. So she was my biggest influence growing up. And I still really think of that now because, I mean, if I didn't get that experience as a little kid, who knows if I would have ever had, you know, the guts to get up on a big stage early on in my career. So yeah, a lot I'm, of people don't. Right? I'm really like... grateful for that. Exactly. And I think now between, you know, actual like my musical influences that I pull from, of course, like someone like Carly Pierce, um, I really like the fact that she's pulling in kind of traditional country into the modern world. And I love, you know, I love hearing that. But I really do have that 90s, even 80s country deeply embedded into me because that's what I grew up on. So I think, you know, the women through that era are who I look back on and kind of that's where my musical influences come from. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, that's a, that's a great answer. And right down on the ant, we got to give a shout out to her. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really wild how sometimes, you know, one person can really help shape your future. Absolutely. Um, that's cool. What about uh, what about outside of music? Who, who are some of your biggest uh, female influences, not non-musical? Oh, my mom, for sure. Um, she's here. She's downstairs. She's everywhere I am. Yeah. I, I go on the road with her all the time. She She's my my hairstylist, my my wardrobe fixer, my food runner, my car driver, and everything in between. And I'm really grateful for her. She's a very strong person. And she's definitely made me the woman that I am today. And I, I definitely couldn't do any of this without the support of her and, of course, my dad as well. And I'm just grateful for somebody like that to, you know, have I get to walk in her shoes every day, so I'm I'm really proud to call her my mom. Yeah, well, that's great. Uh, that's a very heartwarming answer. <laughs> For 2022, what are the songs that you've been listening to the most? Would you say? 2022. Um. Ah, oh, my. Putting you on the spot here. You are putting me on the spot here. <laughs> um, you know, one a song that just came out. It actually was released the same day as Wild. Um, it was by, it's by Ian Munzik and Cody Johnson. It's called Long Live Cowgirls. And for anybody that knows me, like my life on the farm is very, like I, that's true my life, that's my life, it's deep embedded in my soul. And that song has it, an impact to me. Yeah. The song itself is just about, you know, how cowgirls are pretty much so strong. And that song is, that's my favorite song right now. I guess yeah. I can say that. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, after this one, I'll let you get going down to your show. Uh, sure. I just want to ask, what uh, what else can fans expect for the rest of 2022? You got a, a new potential album coming out. Um, yeah, is there anything else? I guess you got to finish off this tour. Are you doing any more touring or any more uh, yeah. music videos, anything like that? Absolutely, that's the plan. We're, I'm awesome. going to stay as busy as possible through 2022. I'm yeah. going to do as much and get in front of as many people now that I'm allowed to. And shows, shows, show, shows throughout the year. New music, new music, new music is coming out. And... Of course, videos along with that and everything in between. Uh, hopefully, you guys can hear a lot from me because there's going to be a lot coming in the near future. Amazing. That's that's so great to hear. Where uh, if fans do want to find out more about you, where do they go? Um, everything's on my website, which is Uh The links to my Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, all that kind of stuff's on there. I keep pretty up to date with what I have going on in my music life, but also my personal life. I keep pretty, you know, if you want to check on what's going on with the farm, it's usually on there as well. <laughs> so definitely come follow along. Awesome. KendraK.com. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll finish off there. Before, do you got any uh, any last words for our viewers now that we're uh, out of a pandemic and back in a music land? We're back. It's so great <laughs> to be back. I thank you guys all for ever watching, listening, tuning in. Us artists can't do what we do without you. So we thank you guys so much. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much, Kenja. Thank you so much.